Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, been a little under the weather, so I'll try to keep this short. You can probably tell I'm a little uh, congested still. Um, anyway, uh, starting off over at Ars Technica in their uh, technology lab slash information technology section, uh, they have an article posted here that they that a two thousand four hundred dollar introduction to Linux course will be free and online this summer. Earlier this week, the Linux Fo Linux Foundation announced that it would be working with EDX, a nonprofit online learning site governed by Harvard and MIT, to make its introduction to Linux course free and open to all. The Linux Foundation has long offered a wide variety of training courses through its website, but those can generally cost upwards of $2,000. This introductory class, which usually costs $2,400, will be the first from the Linux Foundation to run as a massive open online course or a MOOC. There is no limit on enrollment through EDX's platform. So pretty cool. Uh, definitely check it out, especially if you're new to Linux. It's, it's uh, definitely something to uh, look into. From the register, are you dying for an Ubuntu Linux phone? Do you even know how much an Ubuntu Linux phone is going to cost? Well, now you will know. Uh, Mark Shuttleworth, the CEO of, of uh, Canonical, the company that makes Ubuntu and the Ubuntu Linux phone, has the, spilled the beans on uh, the price tags. Just because Ubuntu Mobile is based on Linux doesn't mean Ubuntu handsets will be really cheap, like phones running on some other open source operating systems. Speaking at the CBIT conference in Hanover, Germany on Tuesday, Canonical founder Mark Shuttleworth said that we should expect the first Ubuntu phones to be mid-high-end devices with price tags in the $200 to $400 range. Yeah, that's mid to high, that's high mid-end. Mid-high-end, I should say. No, that's high mid-end, yeah. Uh, you know, high end is, you know, 400 upwards of a thousand dollars for a phone. Uh, anyway, that's not much diff that's, an, that's a much different approach than the one taken by Mozilla, which has been targeting emerging markets with o open source Firefox OS phones that it hopes will soon cost as little as $25. The thing that I've discovered is your phone hardware really matters. I mean, People knock Apple. This is, a, you know, an iPhone 5S. This is a $650 phone if you were to buy it with no contract unlocked. That's an expensive... This isn't even uh, the uh, most expensive one. You can get a 32 gig one or a 64 gig one, I believe. It's upwards of 1000 bucks. Anyway, um, the cheapy phones are garbage. You know, the thing that I've discovered particularly, and I'm not saying this because I, I'm trying to come across as an Apple fanboy or anything, but the thing that I've discovered is generally, uh, especially on the on the higher end devices, um, the more you pay, the better the device is. You know, uh, you know, the performance is best in class. The build it fit and finish is best in class. Uh, you know, on a $25 device, you cannot expect that. And it would be ridiculous to think that you could. From Ars Technica uh, in their risk assessment slash security and hacktivism, a critical crypto bug leaves Linux and hundreds of apps open to eavesdropping. The GNU TLS bug is worse than Apple's is is worse than the big Apple go to fail uh, bug that uh, they fixed last week. Hundreds of open source packages, including Red Hat, Ubuntu, and Debian distributions of Linux, are susceptible to attacks that circumvent the most widely used technology to prevent eavesdropping on the internet thanks to an extremely critical vulnerability in a widely used cryptographic code library. The bug in the GNU TLS library makes it trivial for attackers to bypass secure sockets 
and transport layer security protections available on websites that depend, that depend on the open source package. Initial estimates included its internet discussions such as uh, this one, and there's a link to it, uh, indicate that uh, more than 200 different operating systems or applications rely on GNU TLS to implement crucial SSL and TLS operations. But it wouldn't be surprising if the actual number is much, much, much higher. That's right. Web apps, email programs, and other code that use the library are vulnerable to exploits that allow attackers monitoring connections to silently decode encrypted traffic passing between end users and servers. This is, you know, I, I have just uh, found out about this as I was prepping to, to do the show, so I don't have a lot of detail on why, what exactly uh, makes this bug uh, so bad, but um, I imagine it's, it's pretty egregious. And uh, not unshockingly, I'm curious how it managed to go undetected for as long as it has. Only time will tell. Uh, from Engadget, another major game engine sets Linux support ahead of Steam's, gets Linux support ahead of Steam Machine's launch. This is pretty nice. The engine that powers the Crisis series, CryEngine, is headed to Linux. That means games like Crisis 3 and Rise of Rome, Rise Son of Rome, could see ports on Valve's forthcoming Linux powered platform, Steam OS. Really nice. At the very least, it means that developers already working with CryEngine have a shortcut to porting their work to Steam machines. So, pretty cool. Uh, more details to come uh, next week as, as uh, more information becomes available. From ITWorld.com, Unix Networking Basics for the Beginner. This is a nice little handy article uh, for those of you who are new to Unix slash Linux and networking in general, this is definitely a nice read to go through. I thought I'd include it in the show notes today. Uh, it's about five or so pages. Pretty good read. Definitely check it out if you're somewhat new to networking in Unix land. From militaryaerospace.com, the ACQ Inducom debuts OpenV. PX, ooh, make that go away. V debuts an Open VPX 3U single board computer with the Freescale Q or IQ T4240 processor. Well, that's a mouthful. Uh, ACQ Inducom is uh, pr introducing its Medusa VPX3424. It's a 3U uh, single board computer featuring the T4240 processor from Freescale Semiconductor, the new 4240 12-core 24-thread processor running at up to 1.8 gigahertz is based on the E6500 core with Altivec and offers 216 gigaflops of performance and power efficiency. You can get up to 12 gigs of RAM with ECC and a range of fast interconnects. It forms the heart of the new board, bringing unparalleled performance. So why are we talking about it here on a Linux show? Well, support for this, uh, it supports uh, VxWorks, Integrity, Pike OS, and Linux. And that's why we're talking about it. If you want to run Linux on this bad boy, you can. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Uh, should be pretty interesting to see uh, what comes of it. Over at uh, boingboing.net, getting started with the Raspberry Pi. Now we've linked to several, over, over the last couple of years, Raspberry Pi has been available. We've linked to several getting started with Raspberry Pi articles. Boing Boing definitely has one of the better ones. So definitely check it out if you're new to Raspberry Pi or if you just want to know what Raspberry Pi is about. Definitely that is the place to start. That'll do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.